join us on this extraordinary voyage that crosses a wild country created by great forces of nature. On a railway line that took decades to build and only seconds to crush. This coast-to-coast -coast journey will pass through magnificent mountains, a stunning sacred place that has been inspiring the Maori for centuries. The beauty of it is, in a million years, this will still be here. A train line that has had to conquer deep gorges on its way to Christchurch that sits on a deadly fault. The stress to push that out is just phenomenal. We'll meet the people who live and work along this very special train line. This is no ordinary railway journey. This is one of the most scenic railway journeys in the world, New Zealand. Our journey begins on the west coast at Greymouth, a town with a thriving railway and a station steeped in nostalgia. This is the starting point for our train, the Trans-Alpine. To cross South Island from Greymouth to Christchurch will take four and a half hours. From the lush lowlands, we head into the Southern Alps, through Otira Tunnel to our route's highest station at Arthur's Pass. Then we enter an unspoilt wilderness of big rivers before we head to the flat plains of Canterbury. After 139 miles, we'll arrive at our destination and the Pacific Ocean. The train leaves Greymouth carrying up to 400 passengers. It attracts a wide range of day trippers, train buffs, and some just here to celebrate. I wanted to make it special. New Zealand is such a special place. This dramatic landscape was sacred to the Maori a land they knew for hundreds of years before any Europeans arrived with their industries. We're passing the front of mine very shortly. This area is where the railway line first started. This was one of the 130 coal mines in the area. It was the need to transport the coal that ignited the need for a railway, as David explained. The railway was built to access the resources of the west coast coming from the Greymouth side and coal and gold were from a European perspective the keys to driving that west coast economy and timber was not far behind. The train is about to cross one of the world's biggest and most dynamic features, the Alpine Fault. It's so big, you can see it from space. For 300 miles, it runs down South Island. We're crossing the Alpine Fault Zone at the present time. We have a broad zone, probably 500 metres or so wide. It's a very active, dynamic landscape. In the last 12 million years, the fault has pushed up the Southern Alps by over 12 miles. Only the fast pace of erosion has kept these magnificent mountains under 13,000 feet. All of this melds together, and uh, it's really, I think, uh, hugely impressive. As the train heads out of the plains, the journey enters a new landscape, the Southern Alps. Unable to go over them, the engineers had to tunnel. You've got gas from explosives, you've got rockfall, so all of that combines to make it very, very difficult. The train descends 1,200 feet down the fearful gorge. Its drop in altitude is tough on the train, so it needs regular care. There is quite a bit involved in looking after the carriages. They do work through the night to make sure that the consist is ready for the next day. Everything's um, drained, clean, tidy. That's a 24-hour operation. 
It takes a team of around 11 people to nightly check and maintain the train. The guy's job is to inspect the train. He will be going from the front of the van, underneath, checking all bogies, all draw gear, all running gear, just to make sure everything's perfect. He'll check everything one way and then coming back, he'll make sure he's done it the second time to sign it off. This big American-built DXC diesel locomotive has up to 3,300 horsepower. Once the train is refueled, the checks continue through the night. Testing, so, testing, one, two, three. So he's good. Yep, I can hear you loud and clear, Todd. Everybody on the team here plays their part, and then the train becomes um, safe and ready for morning. As the Alpine fault continues to squeeze the island, the cracks even far from the fault forcefully move, causing earthquakes. At 4.35 on the 4th of September 2010, a massive earthquake hit South Island. The magnitude of these shockwaves reached a terrifying 7.1 on the Richter scale, directly along the transalpine route. Just there being there, look at that. Zach was working that day when he came across the track, bent as if it was just rubber. There's a bit of power in there, eh? That's nature there. When I first arrived out there, I, I just shook my head. First two things, it's our heaviest rail. It was supported by our heaviest type of sleeper. Had good track, track formation around the side, and it just, you know, to do something like this is pretty, pretty amazing. We're now on the fertile expanse of the Canterbury Plains the largest area of flat land in New Zealand, covering 3,000 square miles. As our train heads to the coast, so does the Waimakariri River. It's 150 kilometres long. It's from a glacial melt, so it's um, quite unique. And we do get lots of colours in it from different season to season. In the spring, it can turn beautiful jade colours. Once again, it is a huge braided river system that carries three million tons of gravel to the sea every year. In 1880, Springfield's first station was built to coincide with the start of the Midland Line. Now, the place is full of nostalgia rather than passengers, as Heather, the cafe owner, explains. In those days, the commuter trains were going through to the coast and a sea of people would come in here and there'd be ladies lined up against a great long bench that ran almost the full length of the cafe. Teapots, coffee pots, everything was at the ready. Cups and saucers and they'd be practically filled with beverages before the people got off. And there'd be this huge clamour of people just racing in here to get their drinks and their food and to get back on in time. And um, it was all over. You know, just like that. It might not be brimming with people, but it still plays an important part in the smooth running of the Transalpine. Today we've got a small order for um, 20 cheese platters to go on the train, uh, which is due in at 20 past five. These are the cheese platters. These are the beautiful Barrows Bay cheeses that we put through in the cheese boards. And um, these go on board for passengers to eat. I love trains. I didn't know the first thing about trains till I came here. <laughs> all of a sudden, all these train people come out of the woodwork. It was a stroke of luck that brought Heather here. We were walking through Darfield one morning when my boys were quite a bit younger and my eldest son spotted a little card in the window of the real estate agent in Darfield 
They said, oh, look, Mum, there's a cafe. We should buy that. It's in Springfield. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> we just bought, bought the business. And um, we uh, never looked back. And we really enjoy it, really love it. The folk that we work with it in Kiwi Rail and Christchurch are just amazing. And, um, and they've got to know the drivers and the, all the different staff. It's brilliant. <laughs>